So when I was watching season 4 of You, the one character that really annoyed and bothered me was Kate. I understand that part of her character is to be bitchy and hostile, so you're not necessarily supposed to like her immediately or even at all. And her introduction is somewhat different from Joe's previous love interest because she doesn't take a liking to him immediately, which is fine and can be interesting. But the part that really gets me is her elitism. I'm not trying to get in your life. I know a grift when I see it. You are a hollow nobody. She is suspicious and hostile towards Joe, not because she has reason to believe that he's a creepy, stockish murderer that he is, but she's suspicious of him because she thinks he's a low-class American grifter trying to get clout by hanging around her poor little rich friends. I think Yu does a really good job at exploring and poking fun at high society privileged people, but oh my god, the British upper class is something else. One of the things that make us keep tolerating Joe is because he's surrounded by awful people. People who are potentially even worse than he is because they're not only morally repugnant but are also careless with people who are below their station. So when we first meet Kate, she treats Joe as an other because he does not fit in the group. And who is part of that group again? Well, we have the exploitative artist, the disgusting high-class bitch, the self-entitled and self-victimizing predator, and only one saving grace, which is Phoebe. But she also has a sucky boyfriend, so yeah. And Kate is openly hostile to Joe, but when Joe is showing no interest in hanging around them, she quickly switches up and uses her authority, so to speak, to coax him into hanging out with them, all because her rich friend Phoebe wants him to be there and will be upset if he brushes her off. It's that kind of attitude of the rich uh, being disgusted by the poor but are at the same time dependent on them to maintain their own comfort and if the poor are being disagreeable, they threaten them or corner them till they have no choice but to bend. Now I know this is a bit of a stretch kind of description and my description is a lot more dramatic than what happens in the show but big dramatic ideologies carry down to small day-to-day interactions and Kate's first impression of Joe is that of someone looking down her nose at someone she perceives is lesser than them. And the more we learn about her, there's supposedly more layers that we uncover about her that oh that she's actually secretly caring and she seeks to help those who are less fortunate. Like basically she's a bitch with a heart of gold. And to me, and maybe I'm missing something but I just don't understand why. You know people who are supposedly kinder than they let on. I mean I get the logic of being guarded and not showing people your cards but what's the actual point of hiding the fact that you wish to help people? Because opposing that, we know why bad people virtue signal, right? So they can gain trust from people and exploit that trust for their own benefit. But what's the point of Kate helping her artist friend's victim when she's at the same time showcasing and platforming his works? She speaks badly about her group of friends, but at the same time, she still surrounds herself with them. Like, even if she's sticking around for Phoebe... She could actually just be friends with only Phoebe and not with the whole lot of them. But yeah, sure, you can tell me how awful they all are as much as you like. But as long as you're still associating with them and tolerating them, you are in a way endorsing them. Especially if you are showcasing an exploitative person's artwork. She's so above it all and condemns privileged people. Why is she hanging around them? And at the start of the season, why is she even dating one of them? And this brings up her most icky character trait is that she is a hypocrite and not in the slightest way possible. Like she shames all her friends for being rich and privileged but chooses to ignore her own rich and privileged past. Like the only reason we know about it is because she got exposed in front of Joe at the dinner. She would have merrily gone on her way pretending to be this independent woman that just so happens to be part of this upper class friend group and openly condemning them while not admitting and acknowledging her own privilege. And even though she did not know about the sexual harassment charges towards Malcolm, she was still aware enough of him sleeping with his students. I guess this is a bit more of a grey area because she said it in passing, but she seems perfectly okay with it. Yeah, she seems perfectly okay with a professor abusing his position and being inappropriate. Even when we see her be seemingly genuinely distressed over how her friends demean other people, she simply huffs and puffs and walks away instead of putting a stop to it. She virtue signals, but when it comes down to moments where her voice and action would actually matter, she chooses to make it known that she disapproves 
but does not execute any meaningful action to stop the injustice that's happening. And with that, I find that she is as unreliable as Jo is when it comes to her past. And re-watching this series, I realised that Kate is, in a lot of ways, she mirrors Jo. She hides her past and only fesses up to it when someone else reveals that part of her. And when she first has that conversation with Jo about her father, she spoke about how her father paid to have the well water toxicity reports falsified when it was actually her who did it. Kind of like how... It's along the same vein of when Jo was telling her about love, that she was this spoiled, rich, bad woman and he stuck out with her for too long. Even though that part is true, he conveniently omits all the things he's done in the relationship and in the past. Kate seems genuinely regretful of her past and is trying to do better, but so was Jo this whole season. She does something bad in the past, but she does not atone for it in any meaningful way but instead runs and adopts a new kind of persona, kind of like Jo. Like instead of doing the hard ground work and surrounding herself with the less privileged or actually, you know, legally fess up to her deeds and face the consequences, she just decides to stay in her circle while occasionally helping selected individuals. She has the same kind of logic that Jo does. So either get her punishment on her own terms or carry out this deluded idea of if she's put away, there's so many poor innocents that won't get saved by her. Neither her nor Jo have gotten their comeuppance and are instead thriving at the end of the season. In a way, she's a lot worse than Jo because she grew up more privileged than he did and Jo's background is one of his redeeming qualities so far. And while we know where Jo is at because we are privy to his internal monologue and know when he's either outwardly lying or lying to himself, we don't have that with Kate. Which leads me to believe that she might be even more dangerous and sinister than Jo is. Because as genuine as she seems to be at regretting her actions, Jo seems just as genuine when speaking about his past with his wife and kid. So, Kate Galvin, as annoying as I found you this season, you could actually lead to something really interesting and I do hope they go somewhere with her and not just have her as an aside in the next season because I think that would be kind of wasted potential. So I'm really excited to see where they take Kate and if she will be the ultimate reason for Joe's downfall in season 5 or if in some way both of them kind of implode as a couple. I want Joe to lose but at the same time, I don't want Joe to lose and Kate to win because I want both of them to lose, you know? So yeah, I hope they implode in their relationship in the next season. I mean, that's just what I want. Netflix, that's up to you, man. <laughs>